This is the fourth video in the user defined object series and it's for information technology and the grade 12 CAP syllabus. This video is just a little bonus feature. We've covered basically everything that we need to know. Um, but I just want to go into a little bit more advanced stuff with regard to objects. In, in the first three videos, we discussed what an object was, we, how do we create our own objects, uh, how do we put attributes into the objects, how do we access those attributes and get information or actions of the object via methods. And then we actually used our object in a particular program. Now the program that we used it in, it was a very simple program and it only used one object. I'm just going to go into a little bit more advanced mode now and actually to see the true power behind objects and how they can really make our life a lot easier. Um, I'm going to use more than one object in the following example. So let's have a look. I've got an example over here. I've got a little program. It's going to use the same object that I created. Now, if you look over here, we've got our a dog show form. I've got a little button and I've got a, a rich edit display. And over here, I've got my units. I'm going to go to my class and just double check. Now, the beauty of this, as I said, because we created this class in a separate file, I can now copy it. I, I, well, I've done this already. I went and copied the pass file. If I go to the data files, I copied that file from the previous program and just pasted it in here. So now I can use it for this program, a completely different program. And I don't have to reinvent the TDOG object because we can reuse this code. So here we go. Let's just review it quickly. Yes, I want those attributes. I want those procedures. The only change to this object that I want to make, um, just to make it run a little bit nicer, I'm going to go down to the two string function, if you remember correctly. Um, and we display the name and the weight and the category. I'm just going to take that out. Um, I want to display the name and the age and the weight. So after the name, I'm going to put um, if age. But remember, if age is an integer, so we must convert from an int to a string. And then I'm going to add another hash nine. So there's a tab, and then the weight. Um, sometimes you might get asked in your two string functions to have different stuff on different lines. Maybe you wanted to put a whole different uh, thing on a new line. Uh, for that, you can use the you can go plus hash 13 if you didn't aware, aren't aware of it. Plus hash 13, that puts it on a new line. But there we go. There's my two string, just slightly modified. So name, then age, then weight. That's the only change I'm going to make there. So I'm going to save it. And now let's go to our main program. Now I've done a lot of the code for you already, but let's remember we're going to use our object and remember the five steps. The first step, we need to use the library file. So I'm going to come over here. And make sure I use the CLS dog underscore u file so that it knows the details about my T dog object. The next thing I'm going to declare my objects. Now, because I'm going to use them both when the form is created and on the button, I'm actually going to declare this globally. And I'm going to create an array of dogs. So a whole bunch of dogs. So this is going to be an array. And let's say we've got one to a hundred. Now, they are going to be, each one of those elements in the array are going to be of type T dog, of, of my object type. And so here's where we start to see the real power behind objects, how we can make our life a lot easier. Okay, now, I'm not sure if I've got 100 elements or not. Um, so I'm going to, it's always a good idea whenever you've got an array to have some sort of variable that's going to keep track of how many elements are actually in the array. Because maybe there are only seven, so that's going to tell me how many elements are in the array. So that's why I keep an n variable, or so almost like a counter variable. Now I've done a lot of the code for you already. So that was step two. Um, now this is like the trifecta question because it's got arrays, it's got text files, and it's got objects. I created a text file over here, as you can see, and I've put it in the same folder as my Delphi files. And basically, it's a sem, uh, it's a comma separated file. So, oh, it's a text file, but it's got commas that separate the data. So there is the name, there is the age, and there is the weight. And there we go for, for a few of these these dogs over there. So what I want to do is I'm going to read the data from this text file and put it automatically into the array when the form gets activated. And just to refresh, hopefully you know this already. Otherwise, we'll have to make some videos on text file handling. But we are going to create a text file. So I first check if the text file exists. If not, then it just closes. 
Um, this should all be old news for you. You should know this. You should be able to do this in your sleep by now. By grade 12, you should be able to handle text files quite easily. We assign the file, we reset while not in the file, um, and then I read line. All this code over here is basically extracting from each line of that text file. It's extracting the, the S name, it's extracting the SH and the S weight out of the text file that is separated by commas. So I find the position of the comma, get extracted and then deleted and so on. Okay, once we have extracted the data, now I want to insert it into my array. Now remember this is the third step. We need to create or instantiate the, um, the object. So we know that it's in an array and we are going to deal with each element in the array. Now how do we know which element we are going to start with? Well, it's probably a good idea to, to increase n because n is the number of elements. So at, for those of you who don't know, when you create a global variable, it's automatically an integer global variable, it automatically defaults or initializes to zero. If you want to make double sure when we create the form or when the form gets ac activated, we can always initialize it over here in the beginning to zero. It's because there's no elements in my array. The moment I read a line from the text file, that means I've got at least one element. So that means I'll increase n, so now I become a 1. So in position n, which in the first time it does it will be a number 1, this will be a separate t-dog object. So we will do just like we would normally do for a, a create or constructor. We call, we say it's assigned to the t-dog object dot create. And then we can put our values that we extracted from the text file into as into the create constructor as parameters. So s name, comma s age, comma s weight. Oh, it didn't spell weight properly. There we go. Okay. And that is our third step. So it'll take that. Then when it reads the next line of code, it'll increase n. So it'll become a two and it'll then create the second object in the array dogs array. So there we go. So that's basically creating my object. And once we've created it, all the data should be in the array of t dogs, and so now we can use it. So on this display dog entries button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the the rich edit uh, component. Then I'm going to add some nice little headings at the top, and I'm simply going to use a for loop. And I could go from one to a hundred, but I'm, as I said, I'm not sure if there are a hundred elements in the array. Maybe there's a few less, and that is why we use that n global variable. Because now I know there are n elements in the array, because that keeps track over here. Every time we add an element, it increases by one, so it keeps track of how many elements are in my array. And I'm going to say my rich edit. Hopefully, rich edit. Okay, there we go. I forgot to put the for loop variable there. So there's for R. So rich edit. There we go. Now it's working. Dot lines. Dot add. Now this is the fourth step where we're actually using the um, the methods that were built into our object. And so which which method do I want to use? Well, I've got that two string function. So I go array dogs, and I go each one is R dot to string. So it's going to call the two string function and just put it into the rich edit. And there we go. And when I run it, okay, there's an error over there. What is my error? Array dogs. And that's a missing semicolon above. Simple rookie mistake by me. So let's run the program. So it's it's loaded, the program is running, so therefore it's obviously been successful in loading the data from the text file into the array. And now when I click on this button, hopefully it'll go through that array and display all the two string methods of each object. And there we go. We've got all the dogs, their ages and their weights. And so we're starting to see a little bit easier now how how um how much easier it's making our programming by already writing the two string function I don't need to write that code for each and every object that I've got I can simply just call the two string method and it will do it for me because it's already been written in our t dog object over here you'll also notice I didn't do the fifth step where I freed the elements um, 
it's not a hundred percent needed it's, it's a good practice to do it um, in this case there's not really a place to do it if when on the form close that would probably be a, a good place so if I had the form and I wanted to exit the form then I could then go and write the program that would or the code that would free up that uh, array of objects but in this case it seems to work without it so there we go so this is a little bit more advanced example as I said we added the library file like we did we declared it and we have an array of t dogs and the key thing is that create making sure you get that part correct and then the rest of it should flow very nicely I hope these four videos have been useful and I hope that you can understand how to use objects and that you have the skills that you need to work on objects in your pet work on them when you practice them and obviously be able to answer questions on them for your practical exams and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way. Just another reminder about st study opportunities. Um, they've got lovely textbooks which you can use, which have got lovely examples which you can practice on, some extra examples, some extra object examples, um, and they're very useful books. So please make sure you go to their website and see if you can get hold of them. Also, feel free to go to our channel. Um, here's the YouTube address. All of the videos that we do are loaded up on there. Um, so hopefully you can find this as well as other examples on how to do objects and exam type questions on how to do objects. And I hope they are all useful.